right. Uh, I will be shortly going through the uh, orange sheets in your packet, so I encourage you to pull those out momentarily uh, or now. Um, so my name's Hans Riemer, and uh, I am an advocacy campaign manager at AARP. I started uh, as a National Academy intern in 1993, um, right during the height of the health care debate of the Clinton administration. So uh, here we are a generation later, and you all are witnessing essentially, perhaps hopefully with a better result, the, uh, the same thing that I saw. It was such a heady time for me. Uh, I just remember being so excited about everything I did, even though my job often amounted to a little more than reading the newspaper and photocopying the clips, uh, which I imagine you guys, it's all cut and paste into you know some Word document. but. Um, uh, it was just such an exciting time. So uh, welcome to Washington. Please come back. Um, and, uh, and I hope some of you will develop an interest in Social Security. Personally, I've always found it to be such a fascinating issue because it cuts across every segment of uh, public life or, or um, you know, political pursuit. You know, there's very serious policy issues having to deal with social welfare. Um, you know, how families are supported. My own father was raised on Social Security because his father died when he was five. Uh, my own father went to, went to college thanks to the Social Security benefit, as a matter of fact. Um, but it's also an incredibly political issue. Uh, you know, the, the, the Democratic and Republican parties, their, their differing philosophies on this issue have animated a tremendous amount of our national politics over the last few years. Um, so it's a really exciting place to uh, develop a focus. Um, it's not just a, a granny issue, which I think perhaps in years past it was thought to be, um, but I think it's pretty hot. So Social Security is cool stuff. Um, I wanted to, uh, I, my charge here is to get into what we're supposed to do. Um, you know, as a, as a recent father, I can tell you that uh, having three kids is definitely not an option. That is an extravagance, and I will not be going in that direction. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm, my hunch is that that's where you all follow, even though I grew up in a three-child family. Now, if the next generation decides, hey, three kids is where it's at, maybe those charts will get redone. But um, until there's a sign of that, uh, we actually do have to figure out what to do. Um, the, the game that has been set up is that you have to solve the financing for some period of time, 75 years. Uh, some people say you have to solve it indefinitely. Uh, some people say, well, why would we even do 75 years? That's impossible. We'll never get there. Let's just do as much as we can. But the game that, uh, the game that have been, has been established here is 75 years. So in your packet, that orange sheet is a set of options that, uh, that get somewhere part of the way or all the way there. Um, you know, behind all of these options, there's a lot of words. Um, some of the ones that comes to mind for me are, are improving Social Security, or reforming Social Security, changing it, cutting it, saving it, destroying it, strengthening it, gutting it, modernizing it, personalizing it, fixing it, individualizing it. Uh, all of those words are very applicable and have been used at very different, at different points. Um, naturally, both sides try to adopt what is their most favorable language. At some point, everyone wants to say we're making Social Security better, we're strengthening it, we're improving it. Uh, but ultimately, they do end up resting in different places because there's a policy agenda that they're trying to pursue and that they have to communicate to people in order to build political support. Um, so generally, you see one side gravitating towards language around personalizing Social Security, um, which means many different things that we'll get into. Um, and on the other hand, you, you have a coalition that's largely focused on supporting the current structure of the program. And they're always searching for ways to make that sound exciting, and it's, sometimes it's hard. But uh, at least you can say for that group, the word reform sometimes makes people nervous. But um, let's just try to peel back behind that rhetoric and figure out what's going on. Um, fundamentally, there is a very different clash. There's a clash of very different philosophies or values or perspectives. Um, and, and really, there's a thousand inputs from a policy and political perspective into how you arrive at these different visions. But um, let me start with a key fact. Now, you all know if you read my bio, you probably, or please don't if you haven't, but it, it, I have a perspective. So you'll see it if, you know, I can't really hide it. I wouldn't want to be disingenuous. But I'm going to do my best to, uh, 
communicate things in a, in a neutral way. Um, but I wanted to start with a key fact. Uh, first of all, today, um, Social Security provides a benefit guarantee that uh, for an average worker means that whatever happens when they're old, they'll have about as half as much money as they need, maybe a little bit more, half, but, but about half as much money as they need to be comfortable, uh, to have a decent life, you know, where they're independent. And, um, you know, that's a general standard according to what retirement experts would say. That Social Security and, and the level of the guarantee benefits, no matter what happens, they're going to have about half of what they need. For the rest, they have to save and invest on their own. Now, people don't really get guaranteed benefit pensions anymore, so really they are on their own for most of the rest. So that's 401k plans and IRA plans, um, or just savings in banks, bonds, those kinds of things. Um, however, due to changes uh, in the past, um, you know, the last, particularly the last uh, round of changes in 1983 to Social Security, that, uh, and as well as some Medicare changes, that share of the income that Social Security provides is going to decline um, for people, you know, my age, your age, future retirees. Um, it's going to gradually decline due to scheduled increases in the retirement age as well as offsets with Medicare premiums to the point where the guarantee is going to be a little bit closer to a third, uh, perhaps a bit more than a third. Um, so that's just a context I really wanted to get across as for, you know, you have to, in my opinion, come to your own conclusion about what level of guarantee do people need uh, in order to have a decent life. Um, and there are wildly different divergent opinions about that, but ultimately I do believe it comes down to that. And that's really what we'll be debating in the course of trying to develop these fixes, is what's that level of guarantee. So um, one side says that uh, people need a decent level of economic security or protection from risk. Um, you know, that has to provide real dignity, independence. Um, this is a hard thing to quantify, but we can say that for sure the guarantee has to be at least what we have today. Uh, really, it should be more, but it certainly can't be less. So what we have today is about right. Uh, therefore, we need to look at how to increase the level of guarantees that people have through Social Security, through pensions, through many ways. Um, but any changes to Social Security really have to start from this point. Uh, another side says that workers can generally provide for themselves if the government would only give them the chance. Uh, you know, a basic guarantee is needed true, the word basic, but, uh, but there are market, because there are market risks that can't be avoided, but that guarantee can be very modest, uh, much less than what people have today, essentially a quote-unquote anti-poverty benefit. Um, and we need to transition towards a society where people are really taking ownership for their economic well-being. Uh, one way to do that is to gradually scale back Social Security and encourage people to save more on their own. So I think the question is, where do you come down um, along those two philosophies? Uh, your assignment today is going to be to address that shortfall. Um, and again, I just urge you to figure out where you want to go before you start down that path. Uh, otherwise. You know, who knows where you'll end up. Um, now, some would say that uh, a conversation like that really polarizes the debate. You know, if you read the Washington Post, they'd have you think it's just a math problem and there's nothing more to it. I disagree. Um, 